Then he brought Aharon's sons, and Moses put some of the blood on the tips of their right ears, on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood all around on the altar. This is a description of the consecration of Aharon's sons. Yehovah, he had Moses do this with Aaron's sons and with Aaron himself. It is the consecration, it is the ceremony that brought them to a point where they could start serving Yehovah and the people in the holiest place on earth, the tabernacle. One of the few, if not the only things that anyone's ever built under Yahuwah's direct instruction. The things that happen in the temple are very important to him. Now, these things that were done are so particular, right? The tips of a thumb, like, why, why didn't he have him just put the blood on their nipples? <laughs> why didn't he have the blood go on their ring fingers? Why didn't the blood get pulled into their cute little belly buttons? Why so specific? Everything that's done in the temple is a shadow. It is a representation. It is a teaching. It's moving, living, breathing scripture. It's art. It's meant to teach. Aaron's son's hands they represent the work they will do. Their feet, they represent their walk. Their ears represent what they hear when people speak in their hearing. And what does the blood represent? <laughs> You're on this channel, you know what the blood represents. We all know what the blood represents. Notice the blood is not covering the entirety of these body parts, only the tips of toes, thumbs, and ears. What does this mean? Wine is a representation of the blood of the New Covenant, Yeshua's blood. His sacrifice covers those who choose to accept and walk in eternal life. In the book of Judges, Gideon is found hiding in a wine press, a big hole dug in the ground for stomping around on grapes. This, believe it or not, is a foreshadowing of what would come later in Gideon's story. Now the angel of Yahovah came and sat under the terebinth tree which was in Ophrah which belonged to Joash the Abiah's right when his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide from the Midianites. Now Yahovah, even though his people had slipped further and further into sin and were becoming more and more oppressed as a result, was not planning to let them be completely destroyed. No. Yahovah would not let his family be completely destroyed. He had them covered. Gideon would be used to free them from this oppression. But, as foreshadowed, his walk with Elohim would be filled with intoxication. He, even after all that, took some of the spoils of the battles. When I say that, I'm referencing all of the battles that Yahovah guided him through and he won. Even after all of that, he took some of the spoils of the battles Yahovah won for him and his people and used them to worship other gods. Now the weight of the gold earrings that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold besides the crescent ornaments, pendants, and purple robes, which were on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were around their camels' necks. Then Gideon made it into an ephod and set it up in his city Ophrah. And all Israel played the harlot with it there. It became a snare to Gideon and to his house. Now when the children of Israel were freed from the Egyptians, we're talking about 
the Exodus, way back in Exodus. The death of every household's firstborn was the straw that broke the camel's back. Israel was saved from this plague. Notice, like with the blood on Aharon's son's fingers and toes, they did not put the blood on the ceiling, on the fireplace, on all the furniture, the family dog. They painted the door with it. No. It only went on the lintels and the doorposts of their homes. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. That was the instruction given to Moses to give to the children of Israel. And they followed that instruction. So you see, whenever the blood or wine is spoken of as being used according to God's instructions, using it appropriately, sprinkling. Consider this. The scripture is used as doctrine, correction, and reproof. The world is not what ought to be doing the correcting. You and your family and anyone listening will be better off if you trust in God's instructions on how to use what is His. Yeshua died for you, for your family, for everyone who's ever lived, from the old to the new, so that they might be saved. It was his blood that was shed on the cross, and he knew what he was doing. If this has opened your eyes, I praise Yeshua for having shown you this truth, and I pray that he lovingly guides you through using this teaching to strengthen you. And oh my goodness, how strong you will be if you take what you've learned here and you apply it to your life. It is his intention to improve you day in and day out. And his love is eternal. He has you covered. He has you covered. It is his Holy Spirit that gives life to the mortal bodies that we are living within. Curses, curses only last three or four generations, but his mercy is unto thousands. I pray that he blesses you, sanctifies you, and converts you and keeps you walking in the only way, the only truth, the only light that comes from him. Amen.